my name is uh, Filipe Reis and uh, I'm he here with uh, João Miller Guerra and we are presenting the film Legua. We felt the will to be in, in, uh, in Legua because it's a place that uh, I go since I was born. It's a, it's a family house that we have there. And uh, Filipe is being in my life and, and uh, I'm in her life too for a lot of years. And so she also uh, knows the place really well. And we decided we wanted to spend more time there and look for a story there. We didn't want to do a documentary, but we but we kind of like uh, had a, an idea of, 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 of finding some story that happened there. And while we were looking for it, uh, something real happened so that the lady that works has been working there for all, all her life, taking care of the house, uh, fell ill and someone who normally helps her uh, so this happened in front of us. She, she decided to take care of her in her illness. And this was the beginning of, 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 of this idea to do a fiction around this, uh, this story. So during this research, the idea of portraying three generations of uh, women also uh, start gaining uh, you know, weight and, uh, and we decided to go a bit far from documentary and from this uh, real story that uh, was happening and try to add elements that uh, belonged uh, to us and to uh, you know, our observation yes. and building uh, you know, a script that we wrote with a lot of uh, script writers during uh, some years. Non, non, non. Il y a des acteurs non professionnels. Uh, alors, Emilia, we did a, a, a big casting at senior universities and uh, theatre theater groups. groups on the cities around Legua. Uh, and we did some ateliers to work with these women to understand uh, if who could be in the film. And that's how we met Fatima, who plays Emilia. So Fatima is a non-professional actress. During this research, we understood that Anna couldn't be a non-professional actress. And we started a casting for professional actresses. And then when we found Carla, we start building all the cast around her. So the two girls, they are studying uh, theater, but they are non-professional actresses. It's their first film. Um, the husband is a professional actor. The priest is a director with whom we are very friends with and that plays in uh, other films, but it's not a professional actor. And then all the people in the, in the lunches and all the other scenes are, are from the region. Yeah, are friends that we have in the region or family of uh, people that we know. Uh, yes, and that we, we cast there. So Legua is uh, an old uh, measure that it's more or less seven kilometers. Six point Six something. Point it's, something. It's, a, it's a league. It's the name. Uh, and there is this big stone just uh, to the, the house, so really next to the house, there is this big stone. Uh, and this stone represents one Legua from Amarant, that is the nearest city, and one Legua from Marto Canaveso, that it's the other city. So Legua is really in the middle, you know, between these. Uh, and I think this also meant something to us. So when people used to go from one village to the other, when they reached that big stone, they would understand they were still one league away from. And so uh, around this, uh, this stone, uh, a village was set up. And since the project started, we, we would always say, because we say this in our daily lives, we are going to Legua, that's the name of the place. So this week I'm going to Legua, next week I'm going to Legua. So the project became Legua because it had no name. And, but I, th and I think the fact that it represents this old m measurement, it, I think yes, it's like that was also uh, nice for us. Yes, it had a special meaning, so it made sense for us to keep this title. And at the same time, we are portraying this three generation of women 
but of course we are talking about that specific place so so it, it made sense not to call anything else but the name of the place to the film so si since the beginning we want to we wanted to portray the body and the gestures uh, and, and the time and time passing yes. by so making the gestures of making a bed settled some time and represent something, making a bed, uh, but also the gestures for our agriculture and, and also uh, the gestures of taking care of others. So the, the gestures of work also transform for the, the gestures of taking care of other people's body uh, and also touching our body. So it was, you know, these attentions to gestures that were that be starts as working gestures, but then becomes taking care gestures. And, uh. Yes, and time. So time was also very important because we, we knew we would portray this illness and that this lady would die throughout the space of one year. So we were concerned about showing the seasons for the viewer to understand that the time was passing, for the body to decay, for you to feel the wind in your body, so what happened to your hands, what happened to your face. So time is present in everything and we wanted these shots to convey the passing of time. So we, we wanted to have a slow pace in, in, in the film. For us it was very important that uh, in the beginning of film, we get to know Anna. The sex scene, for instance, shows Anna arriving home and being herself, being very happy, being very in control of her emotions and being very in a good uh, relationship with herself and with her husband. And, and immediately after that, you see that she spends her, her time voluntarily uh, being uh, bossed by the, the older lady. So, so this was very important for us to be able to show Anna as she is and then slowly become, you know, ask yourself why does this woman accepts this condition and goes every day to work and take care of a house for no one and then and, and being bossed up around by the, by the old lady, Emilia. <coughs> And at the same point, we wanted to work uh, on, her on her character, the how we feel with the body. So how we feel things with our body, how we feel material, how we feel the sun, how... Uh, and we wanted to work this uh, sensuality around Anna and Anna's character. And uh, that she really belonged to that place, that she was really... Uh, feeling well with her body for being in that place, in that village. So it's not only because Emilia gets ill that she stays, it's her will to stay and her will to stay because it's where she feels good, even if she has to wait for her husband to come on vacation. <coughs> they are taking care of her uh, house which all objects don't tell their story, tells the story of someone that never arrives or a family that never comes. Uh, and we wanted to make them appropriate on the house, on, on, you know, on the kitchen, on the living room, on the, uh, creating a, a space for a bed that cannot fit any other room, so it stays in the living room and they start occupying using the objects and making their house, their own house, uh, and making Emilia comfortable for her last days. Yes, because also uh, we were shooting uh, over and over the same places, so we shot a lot of scenes in the in the kitchen, a lot of scenes in the in the bathroom, a lot of scenes in the in the living room, and we were concerned by this uh, appropriation. So we really wanted to show how they spread into this ambient and how they slowly. Uh, start not caring and not not being afraid and not being uh, uh, concerned by uh, what they are doing. They they, they they are just living there. They are really uh, taking that space as the, into their own hands. Mm. 
he serves uh, to show ourselves. So the, the real owners don't come, but this is someone who is, uh, he has like a free pass. He can go into the house, but as he is a priest, he is not exactly uh, with the same uh, problematic uh, approach to the people who work there. And so he is very dubious. He is uh, on, on one way, he is uh, with them, but on the other hand, he is uh, um, behaving himself as, as, as the owner. So, so this was... Uh, very interesting for us to portray this uh, this man that doesn't. Uh, yes, and this, this uh, scene where he says that uh, you are uh, our family, so you are from our family, and then he disappears. So it's uh, yeah. yeah. This is a very personal answer. Uh, I think each one should have their own answer to that question. My view is that uh, uh, the owl is representing Emilia. So you see the film with Emilia. It starts with Emilia looking at you and being in, his, in her own ambience. And then there is a scene where Anna approaches the owl and they kind of like say bye bye to each other. And, and, and that's the moment where uh, Emilia passes. First things first, <laughs> la canzan pour nous c'est woohoo! <laughs> and it represents, I think, the place where all directors want to present their present films. Their films. It uh, represents our freedom, it represents our home. Il est cinéaste son livre, and there's something very dear to us. Um, and being with uh, Manuel de Oliveira is really very special coincidence. Very special coincidence. And uh, with uh, Leonor's face uh, representing La Canzan, she's a very dear friend. Um, actually, she was supposed to be in the film, but she defended the project at Eurimaj, so she couldn't be in the film. And somehow this all made sense at the end. Uh, so She was to due to be the lady that sells the house and the car would say uh, Abraham uh, houses. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it never happened because it was not possible, but somehow at the end all made sense. Yeah.